look with me in two verses tonight. I want you to look in verse 9, 2 Timothy chapter 4. He said, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. Verse 21, Do thy diligence to come before winter. If God would help me just for a little while, I want to preach on how to make it through the winter. How to make it through the winter. Of course, I know that uh, you think, well, that's why we don't have much of a winter. I'm talking about spiritually. There are your four seasons in our life, but there are also four seasons in our spiritual life. I honestly like the springtime in my spiritual life. That's when the birds are singing, and boy, you're in fellowship, and you're, you're hopping across the trees, and I mean, you're enjoying your walk with God. And then summertime comes, and boy, summer can be dry and hot, and sometimes it feels like in your life, in your ministry, that you're just spinning your wheels and nothing seems to happen. Nobody's getting saved. No one comes to the altar. I don't know how many meetings I have preached and even preached on prayer. Nobody even comes to pray. That's where we are today. But then, thank God, you have fall, and then harvest time, and every now and then the Holy Ghost gets a hold of somebody, and they'll get born again. I'm, I'm glad God's still in the saving business. Amen. And every now and then, someone will get right with God. But then comes that old nasty winter. And uh, the Bible here in this chapter gives us some things how we can make it through uh, the winter time of our lives. But I thought about some things that uh, we can compare winter time with seriously in the winter time. Number one, I thought about the fact that it's cloudy a lot in the winter time, especially up north. Uh, that means it's gloomy. That means it's not clear. And times in your life you're going to go through the winter time, uh, when things are not working right, uh, when you're in the hospital, things are going backwards, uh, and things aren't clear in your life. Sometimes uh, it gets really cold in the winter. You need to be careful when winter time comes in your life spiritually that you do not get cold on God. Amen. I remember the coldest winter in Cleveland, Ohio that I grew up in, 1978. We had a blizzard and it was 18 degrees below zero without the wind still faster. I'm going to tell you that's cold. And I've watched people down through the years in church, but when the storms come and the winter comes in their life, and you watch the glow from their face uh, uh, fade away, and you watch their heart get cold against the things of God, you've got to watch for that, amen. So I say, if you're not careful, the winter time you find a lot to complain about. When you're in winter time, you'll be critical about everything. Uh, you don't like the preaching. You don't like the Sunday school teaching. You don't like the thing. And, uh, this person ought to sing. I've come back and things and all this kind of, you know what that is? It may be you're a good time. You're in the winter. And you're always critical. As they sang a while ago, God has been so good to us. We have nothing to complain about. We ought to never complain again the rest of our lives. But I'm going to tell you, God never did another thing for me. He's done enough for me since I've been saved to get up every morning and say, Bless the Lord. Oh, my faith. Oh, this for them. Bless His holy name. Amen. Oh, we have nothing to complain about. Can I say that sometimes there's chaos in the winter? You have your pile up from the inner state. Boy, we just call a lot of that up in the Carolinas, and they're not used to all of that snow. And boy, chaos can come in the winter. I mean, just a lot of things happen. And I'm telling you, when you're in the winter time in your life, there's chaos. You don't know which way to go. You don't know which path to take. And your life is turned upside down. That happens when you're in the winter time. Can I say, number five, that sometimes people don't make it out of the winter, there's casualties in the winter. I've watched people, circumstances come in their lives, and Brother Floor, I've watched them get out of church. It's because they allowed that winter to make them become a casualty. A church I preached at around Central Georgia, a friend of mine in that church, his mother was only 62, she had ice that night on the front porch, and she didn't know it, and she stepped out and she slipped, and she hit her head just right, and it took her life. There is casualties in the winter. 
I don't know who's going through the winter time, but I'm just telling you, uh, the Lord laid this on my heart. I'm going to give you a few things and we'll get out of the way. Number one, verse five and six of this chapter. How do you make it through the winter? You've got to prepare. The Bible said uh, that you have to keep your eyes open. You've got to watch. You've got to watch what's going around you. When you're driving in the snow, uh, you've got to watch everybody else. You don't know who's going to slide through this way and come that way. I'm telling you, people will sneak up on you. The old devil will sneak up on you during the winter time. You have to keep your eyes open. And I'll say number two, your doctrine your affliction. I wish I could tell you that you're not going to suffer, but that's a lie. Them liars on the radio and television, they'll tell you if you send them 1995, They'll send you a hanky that blows your nose in, and you'll never have another problem the rest of your life. I'm telling you, that's a lie. You hear me? That Job said a man's days were few and full of trouble. That trouble's going to come. And this day and hour, we don't want to suffer. I'm telling you, the child of God is going to suffer. There's going to be problems in your life. But we need to endure hardness as a good soldier. And when trouble comes, thank God, have a backbone. That's a child of God. Don't quit church. Don't quit God. Don't get mad at preachers. Don't get mad at the preacher. Hey, get my house to God. Amen. Amen. And during question number three, can I say evangelize sinners? He said, do the work of an evangelist. You know what is lucky to get your mind off of your problems? Go tell folks about Jesus. You know what that reminds you of? It reminds you of where you were. It reminds you you were a hell-bound sinner. And Jesus came by and rescued you and saved your life. You know that I'll never spend one night in the charred walls of the dam. I'll never know what it's like to be on fire in hell. I'm going to tell you, thank God. And when you're in the winter time, you think about what Jesus did for you. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you to help you get through the winter time. Amen. I was preaching this message in a church, and the pastor got up and he said, You know, that happened to me today. He said, I had went to a supply store to get some things where I was working. And he said, the Lord said, God, a witness for that girl. He said, I don't want to. I don't feel like it. He said, I'm upset and I'm aggravated. And he said, I said, you better witness for that girl. And he said, I'll argue with the Lord for five minutes. Finally, he said, I broke down and began to tell it out. Jesus said, he said, I'm telling you, it fired me up. I left there fired up and forgot all the bad problems that I had. I'm telling you how to get through the winter. If to try to go after others, amen. But Jesus died for sinners. I'm glad he died for red and yellow, black and white. They're all great to turn his side. I'm telling you, I'll always believe in a whosoever will. As long as I have my mind, I believe the Bible, amen. That he takes the death for every man. Hallelujah. He said, be prepared and get ready for eternity. He said, I'm now ready to go. I wonder how ready to go we are. I say because I know your pastor, that this church is probably prepared more than most. And I'm telling you, our churches have become so carnal. They're not prepared to meet the Lord. Those, they're so full of Facebook and so full of video games and so full of television and computers that they're not ready to go. If the something word is found, they'd be ashamed in front of the Lord Jesus at the judgment seat. I'm telling you, how do you get ready? How do you make it? Get prepared. Get ready for eternity. It's something tonight. I'll tell you what, it'd be all right with me. Thank God. If Jesus came tonight, I you know what? We're going to pull out of here and let the Democrats have it. Amen. Yes. You say, well, I'm not sure. Because most of them aren't going. But anyway, just kidding. But the truth of the matter is, they're prepared for his son to be amen. Can I say number two? He said to perform. He said be busy. He said, I have thought a good time. You know what? Young men, we need you more now than we ever did. We need young men to be men. Not to be sick. Our society wants you to be a thing to be a man. I am not ashamed that God made me a man. Hallelujah. I'm not going to bow down to anybody. The only person I'm going to bow down to is Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not ashamed of what I am and what God made me. And you be a man. We need men. We need men to fight. And we need to stand up more than we ever have and be identified. Thank God we do believe abortion is wrong and homosexuality is a sin and thanks to all that garbage is wicked out of hell. We do believe that. 
and we ought to stand that for it and not be ashamed of it and preach it, amen. Amen. We're afraid of what people think. I'm not, amen. He said, I'll fight. Then he said he finished his course. Just stay in it. Winter may be in your life. Just finish the course. I thank God there's, there's men that have finished the course. I think of Dr. Simon. I think of Brother Milford Middle. I think of uh, Brother Sammy Allen, Brother Sin and Blue, Brother Berman Kay. Uh, there's about seven men I used to preach for every year that are out of the ministry. Not everybody listen, Paul. Thank God they're still that some finish the course. Thank God finish what God put in you. Amen. May God help us to do that. He said, number three, keep the faith. Stay with the truth. Did you know that a lot of the people that taught me don't believe what they taught me anymore? Brother Wagner, what they taught me, they don't even believe anymore. They have changed. I, I, I know some that said, uh, you'll never catch me sitting on a platform uh, with a Methodist uh, or not. No, they do it now. They preach for them. Isn't that a blessing? Oh, that kind of point there. You know why? Because we have changed from the truth. But I've got good news for you. That King James Bible still the same as it was a hundred years ago. He said, thank God His truth endures us to all generations. I'm glad it's still the same. The way it went when I got saved, when I got preached to, it's still the same. It went 35 years ago, amen. Thank God the Bible never changes. You change. I may change. But that Bible don't, amen. It is. Oh, listen. He said, look for the future. He said, you know what? He said, there's a crown waiting for those who love his children. Can I tell you, we've got our mind more on this life than we do that life. We've got our mind more on what's happening around about us than we do what's happening up there. You know, he said, looking unto Jesus. If you look unto him, you can't see what's going on down here. If you're looking up there. But the problem is, we're looking out here, and we see all kinds of things, and we get involved in those kinds of things. I don't know how many people I've watched get a hobby in their life, and it takes them out of church, and it takes them away from the things of God. And it takes them away and takes a smile off their face. God help us to look to the future. It ain't about now. It's about over yonder. I ain't worried about what I got in the bank account down here. I'm concerned what I have in the bank account on the other side. Well, it's going to last forever. Amen. Amen. Can I say, number two, he said to perform. Number three, he said you need to have a partner. Verse 10 to 12. Now, some look at this passage, and you may look at it like this way, it's all right. It's kind of like, man, only Luke's been with me. Everybody else is with me. And I kind of look at it, thank God Luke's still with me. When winter time comes, the day when it gets dark, it gets depressing. I believe in Alaska they have more suicides than most places because it's six months out of the year, it's dark outside of one hour every day. And what happens, and I've watched people that go through the winter time in their life, they get discouraged and depressed. They quit talking to people. And they don't want to be around everybody. And they start skipping Sunday nights. And they start skipping Wednesday nights. And they start laying out of Sunday school. And the, box, the reason is they want to pull a cover over their head and just and, and stay away from that. That's the worst thing you can do. Uh, when it's winter time in your life, you need a companion. You need someone to fellowship with. You need to call somebody and say, hey, I need to talk to somebody. I need some encouragement. The problem is in our life, we don't want to admit that we need some help. I preached this message a little old church. The dear brother has to work a full-time job. He runs 25 people. And I gave the invitation and not a soul moved. And I said, I know better than that. And that old boy, that pastor broke down like a old 12 gauge stop gun. God broke that old boy down and he got the weeping. He said, I've been in the longest winter than I've ever been. 
I'm telling you tonight, somebody's in a winner. You need a partner to help you get through it. Can I say number four? That he said, in verse 13, bring the parchments. <laughs> what about this? First thing he said was, bring me a cloak. He said, I want to stay warm. You better stay around the things of God when it comes to earth. You need to stay around the sun. You need to stay around where it's at. People make more excuses, and I don't want to repeat my lessons like that, but they make more excuses to stay home today than they ever have. When winter time comes, you better get around the fire. He said, bring me the books. He said, let me read some material from other men. But he said, especially, <laughs> bring me the parchment. 1992, Brother Sammy Allen was preaching in Amory, Mississippi. He made one statement that helped change my life. He said, a man that will never make a vow will never amount to anything. Who will never make a vow to God. You know what I did, young man? I went to the altar that night. And I said, Lord, I will read that Bible every day of my life. No matter if it's midnight, I'm going to read that Word of God. You'd be surprised. People sit in our churches do not read their Bible every day. I'm telling you, I know I'm going to and I have preached you sent down through the years, and I have told them, and I said, you need to make a vow under God. And it was just a, I back in October at our missions meeting, uh, there's a young lady, Brother Doug Rains' daughter, she came up to me and she said, Brother Bobby, I heard you say that about 15 years ago, and she said, you were right. It changed my life. I read the Bible every day of my life. I'm telling you the Word of God will revolutionize your life. You need to get it inside of you. Amen. He said, bring me the book. I need the Christ. I need the Word of God. You'll never make it through the winter. I read a story in a book about probably 60, 70 years ago. Overseas, a man had got put in jail for believing the Bible and believing in Jesus. They put him in prison, took his Bible away. After 13 years, not days, you and I, we, we had gotten discouraged 13 days. 13 years later, he got discouraged. 13 years. He said, well, maybe it's not so. See so you know what the Lord did? The devil thought, don't you love it when God uses the devil to get his work done? The devil had a guard to find a Bible. And that old guard thought he'd be funny. He's a floor above where this, this fellow was. And he took a page out and he desecrated it. And he flushed it down the commode. Well, that next morning, God in control. They said to that saved fellow who was beginning to doubt, said, you got bathroom duty today. You've got to go clean the restrooms. And guess what he found? He found that page. He cleaned it all up. He took it back to his cell. You know what? <laughs> when it dried up and all, he began to read. He hadn't read it in 13 years. Something got down inside of him. He said, oh. He went back the next morning and said, if you don't mind, I'd like to clean the restrooms again. And sure enough, there was another page that got flushed. And day after day, and Brother Mark, it wasn't long, that old boy said, you know what? I'll tell you, I'll just go with God. I'll just stay with the old time way. I'm going to thank God the way to God. And it's clear to get us through the winter times of our life. Amen. Amen. You know what? The book is for our physical need. The book is for the mental need. That word of God for our spiritual need. Amen. Can I say number five, verse 14 through 15? You know how you got to make it through the winter? You got to pardon those who wronged you. There's more people who hold grudges and bad churches than any place I know. Amen. I was preaching many years ago, probably 25, 26 years ago, and this woman stood up and she said, I want to let my husband know I'm sorry. 
I apologize. I've been holding a grudge against him for 15 years. Then she got saved the next month. I believe it. That's what she needed. She needed to get born. I'm believing you hold grudge for 15 years. Amen. Paul said, you know what? He said, they have wronged me. He said, he rebuked them. But you know what he said? But he said, I have no resentment. I don't lay it against their charge. I said, God not charge them for it. Sometimes what people do to you is put you in the window. Sometimes they can hurt you really bad. I had someone hurt me really bad in the 90s. I'd go lay it dead at night at the priest and I'd lay there. And I'd say, boy, I wish I had said that. Boy, I wish I had done that. About a month of that one night, the Holy Ghost tapped me on the shoulder and he said, that's not tonight. He said, you're going to get on your knees and forgive them, though they'll never ask you. And he said, you're going, to, you're going to do that because if you don't, you're going to become more safe than they are. Do you know I haven't seen that individual in over 20-some years? And if he walks in that building tonight, I can honestly hug him and tell him I love him because I've dealt with him. You see, sometimes we hold something within. I remember my wife's cousin, him and his wife, supposedly made a profession. And I said, supposedly because there wasn't much change in the life. I like that salvation that changes your life. But they asked the pastor, they said, would you uh, give us some marriage counseling? And so he said, sure. So he met with them the first time, and he met with them the second time, and then he began to give them some things to do at home and come back, and they would not do that. And they came to when it got there, they were already fighting. And they left fighting. So after the fifth time, he said, you know what, y'all are wasting my time. I don't have time to waste it on you. You're not interested. But he looked at her and he said, Why are you so bitter? You're so full of anger. He said, Way back yonder. Just holding something on the inside from way back yonder. I'm telling you, sometimes people are going to hurt your feelings. They're going to do you wrong. But I'm telling you, it'll keep you in the winter unless you get it right. Thank God, listen, get over it. You've got to get over it. You've got to get past it. You've got to forgive them and go on. You say, but they were wrong. Yes, they were. But you know what? How many times have we failed God? And yet He loves us and forgives us over and over and over. I've ran through it and said, I blew it again. How oh, would you forgive me? And He wraps His arms around me. It's just so real. I'm right around me. It's part of me. He saved me. He saved you. It's part of us. Amen. Pardon those who have wronged us. Can I say in verse 6, verse 17? You're going to have to have the presence of God to get through the winter time. You know what he said? He said, the Lord stood by me. You know what I have found out? You're going to lose friends along the way. Sometimes it's by nobody's fault. You just get disconnected. Sometimes it's because they change. Sometimes maybe because you change. But you know what he said? I'll be with you every step of the way. For the old, the old song says, standing somewhere in the shadow, you'll find Jesus. I've got a friend, I guess probably now, two months ago, two and a half. His boy worked about 40 miles from the house, 27 years old. He was his assistant, his home leader, taught Sunday school. The boy sometimes had seizures. He was two miles from home, ran across the line, had a seizure, and hit someone head on, and it took his life. He's in the biggest winter that he's ever been. I would text him every three, four days and praying for him, praying for you. I'd skip maybe a week. He'd text me back, oh, please don't quit praying for me. That man is still pastoring his church, but he is struggling because he's in the winter. But if he'll keep doing these things, he will make it through the winter. Because he said, the Lord stood by. Then he said, the Lord strengthened me. Can I say lastly, number seven, you've got to be positive if you're going to make it through the winter. You know what he said? Verse 17, he said, the Lord delivered me out of the mouth of the lion. But here's what I want. And he said, and he shall deliver me. You're going to make it through this winter, 
and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. I don't know what you're going through. You never know who you're preaching to, whose children are afraid. You never know the circumstances in their home, their family, their marriage, their job. You don't know their finances. You don't know. But God does. Some of you in wintertime tonight, He's telling you, if you'll do these things, you will make it through. I have been through the winter. You've been through the winter. Thank God. I've been in church for almost 50 years. Isn't it a blessing to be in the house of God? You know what I wish tonight? I wish that I was as one fourth as faithful to Him as He has been to me. I have no sad songs to sing tonight. I have no complaints. I, I have nothing to, to, to cry about tonight. God's been good to this old boy. I'd rather be an old time Christian tonight than anything I know. Troubles come, troubles go, but God will give us through. Would you let God help you tonight and get through the winter in your life? Oh, God, thank you.